Well, at least I'm getting a rainbow now. I moved on from the entire Miami area after leaving the Everglades. I did not go to Key West. I went to a Dunkin' Donuts in Miami. Stayed there for a while. Let me tell you guys, that area, Miami-Dade County, is so crowded and congested. All the streets are tight turns. I had just such a bad vibe. I thought about staying somewhere in Miami, but I could not find a hotel or anywhere to park overnight that had a surface lot, not a garage. Miami is an extremely dense city. I'm at a Winn-Dixie right now. Just got some groceries. I think I might try to find some place to camp somewhere around here. The Kennedy Space Center is gonna be closed by the time I get there today. So that'll have to be tomorrow. Yeah. Is it just me or has Google Maps driving instructions gotten way worse this year? It used to tell you what lane to be in and the name of the street you're turning on, and it doesn't do those things anymore. It's also driving me through backcountry farm roads in Florida. I'm just going from one tourist destination to another. It should not, should not be like this. I just punched in a random campground near the Cape for tonight. I'm hoping they have vacancy. I'm just going to try to roll in. Okay, so this is a problem. The one and only campground anywhere near Cape Canaveral has, is gated right now. It's only 7.30. This day is just not easy at all. Thankfully, I drove by like a strip mall ocean back there. So many strip malls. I'm not sure I saw a Walmart. I think I may have to sleep at one of those tonight. Hmm. So I saw a big strip mall that I think had a grocery store in it. Usually those get stocked overnight. I might get away with it. It's like a Monday or Tuesday night or something, so I don't think I should have too much trouble. Yeah, right here. I do that turn kind of hard. Let's see what they got. All right, so there's a grocery store. There's actually not a lot going on here. Let's go down a bit further. Here's a good sign, there's someone camping out right here. Hmm. Looks like I'm sleeping in front of a Harbor Freight tonight. There is one clear camper van of someone who is here right now. I think at least one other is also camping and they're all in front of this Harbor Freight store. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I'm not even gonna like, I'm just gonna go right to bed. I think I'm just kind of in a bad mood today, guys, because I spent the last two days driving probably eight or 900 miles from Tampa down to the Everglades and then all the way back up to the Space Coast, literally all of the last two days just to do an airboat ride and, <clears throat> and to camp in a swamp. That's all the Everglades is. I'm glad I saw it, but there ain't nothing there. There's no hiking trails, nothing to do except for the airboat ride. What a huge disappointment, and I'm kind of mad at myself for wasting time. But I needed to touch bottom with Florida. I needed to scratch that itch, see what the Everglades is all about, and I did it. I'm happy. I just hope I get a good night's sleep because I'm really cranky right now. Harbor Freight is going to be pulling some weight tonight. All right, I'll talk to you guys again in the morning. No problems at all at that Harbor Freight last night. I will say though, I would not have slept there had I not seen another van doing the same. You know what I mean? There was a Walmart further up the street I probably would have gone to, but I was tired and I actually thought the Walmart was there. That's why I pulled in there. Anyway, I am in the Space Coast of Florida and today I'm visiting the Kennedy Space Center where they launch all the rockets. I noticed when I was booking my ticket online, they have an option for a chat with an astronaut for like an extra couple of bucks. So I am doing that today. I'm chatting with an astronaut at 2 p.m. The drive into KSC wasn't nearly as exciting as yesterday. No cars exploding in front of me. That guy set the bar high. But I did pass by the Blue Origin headquarters, which is right there on the off-ramp for KSC. I didn't know they were right there. 
I got inside. I'm about to do a tour of their rocket garden, which is right by their admissions. I love the power of these big, beautiful machines. This will actually be the second Saturn V I've encountered on these road trips. Early problems with the Juno 2, but one of its first successes was the flight of a probe called Pioneer 4. They have a Gemini capsule here. All I could think about was how much I wanted to build it out with 8020 and where I would put like the toilet and stuff like that. Yeah, the whole van life thing has perverted my mind. I think my love of rockets comes from my love of big machines, of fire, and my need to just be able to get the frick out of here. Right now, I'm going to go into their Artemis exhibit, which is their whole return to the moon program. We're supposed to land on the moon next year. I don't know if you knew that. I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like I'm entering a nightclub. I swear the floor plan of this Artemis building at KSC rips off a nightclub in Boston that was called Avalon. On Friday nights, they would open up all the different rooms there. And going between the corridors here, even down the stairwell, I felt like I was back in that nightclub. Except here, they have tons of rockets. They have capsules. I actually did a virtual tour on the New Shepard, which is the Jeff Bezos thing that goes up to space. I did a couple rides that simulate flying over Mars and some planets and stuff. I kept going back and doing those over and over again. I think the lady was giving me weird looks by the end, but they were fun. Back outside now, I think I might go over to the Mars exhibit. I felt right at home in the Mars exhibit. They have copies of all the little landers that have landed there over the past quarter century. Very cool. Including the one that was dropped down from like a blimp that hung over the surface. If you haven't seen the video of that, go check it out. I think it was called the Perseverance rover. They actually have another Mars rover outside that looks like something from a Hollywood movie. The Mars stuff is really cool. I don't like the music that's constantly playing in the background here. I have my chat with an astronaut in about 20 minutes, so I'm killing time at Starbucks. Got myself a t-shirt, because I need more t-shirts. They're all swampy and... But anyway, can you imagine me chatting with an astronaut? Okay, if you're up at bat in a, in a baseball game, and it's, you know, <clears throat> this is it, we win or lose, that's a nerve-wracking situation. And being a little nervous makes your vision better, adrenaline does that to you, makes you able to run away from saber-toothed tigers, if that's the game, but it, it's important. And my boss told me that if you're sitting in the rocket on top of four and a half million pounds of high explosives and you're not a little nervous, <laughs> then you just don't understand what's going on. That was pretty cool. Our astronaut was Ken Cameron, who went to space three times, including a highly publicized mission, a docking between Space Shuttle Atlantis and the Soviet space station Mir just before that thing was deorbited. Pretty interesting to listen to. He also flew on the Atlantis, which is retired and mothballed over here in the building right at KSC. I'm gonna go see it now. He's giving me a fever about it after talking about it so much. Yeah, this machine is beautiful. This is my third space shuttle. I saw the one in Houston. I saw the one in New York City. Did a video on both of them. This one though, I think flew more missions than any other space shuttle. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, I wanna deck out the Death Star just like this. Check this out. I can take the stairs down or I can take a slide. I'm hooked on the slide idea. I never want to take stairs again. Oh my God. They actually have a NASA van here. I caught the last show of the day, which was a children's show. I was the only person in the audience. I enjoyed it though. These young ladies poured steaming hot water into a bucket of liquid nitrogen. I liked that part a lot. I did not get time to do a bus tour of the entire campus. 
There's a lot more to see here on the Cape than just this visitor center. There's a whole complex. You can do a bus tour, go all around. I got a pass that allows me to do that. It goes for two days. I think I'm actually gonna come back tomorrow. I have no idea where I'm gonna sleep tonight. I've decided I'm gonna stay in town again. I don't wanna do that Harbor Freight again. I'm not sure I even wanna stay stealth at a strip mall again. I might look for a cheap hotel option or something a little nicer. Yes, I got a room here on the Space Coast for tonight. I wanna go to Kennedy Space Center another day, do that bus tour. And I didn't want the headache of stealth camping in one of these big bo box lots. I did it last night. It creeped me out a little bit. This hotel I got actually was only $108 for one night. The other hotel I got on this trip was in Tampa. It was almost three times that. So I've been on this, this road trip 10 days. This is the second time I've paid for a hotel. I'm gonna get my money's worth here though. I'm gonna refill my water, which will take like 10 trips, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do my laundry here. I'm gonna recharge my Jackery in one of these outlets. And this room they gave me actually has its own kitchen, kitchen and stove. So I'm gonna do a meal prep. I'm about to go out to a grocery store, get some cheap food, do some cooking in here. Yeah, I am stretching my dollar, folks. So I am making it worth it. <sighs> There's actually an Aldi's just two blocks down the street from this hotel. This is the Candlewood Inn or something like that. I think the name of the town is Melbourne. Yeah, I'm going to do a meal prep here. My laundry is going downstairs, so I'll have to take a break from time to time to go retrieve that. The laundry is free, too, for all guests. You don't have to throw in coins or anything like that. Laundry normally costs me like 12 bucks to do all the loads and stuff. So this place is already recouping some of that 108 bucks. As for the theme for tonight's meal prep, yes, this is now a meal prep episode. I'm doing green and orange, which are like the state colors of Florida, as far as I'm concerned. For the green stuff, I got Russell Sprouts, my favorite, broccoli, always a classic. I also got some fresh herbs this time, some dill that I'm gonna throw in. I love dill. I'm not going to use condiments because while I was in the Everglades, all my condiments got so, I guess, humidified that they solidified in the container. I don't know how to get them out. Yeah, the Everglades is just a pervasive, steamy swamp. Anyway, for the orange colored stuff, I got carrots. Always a great way to fill myself up. Got some of those little potatoes, not the big things. They just take too long to cook. And of course, some orange onions. For my meats, I got chicken breasts. I just love chicken breasts, they're too good. For my red meat, I did not get fish this time. I did not get steak. I got a peppercorn pork tenderloin, which is a red meat despite the marketing. It's got hemoglobin in it. It's got iron in it. I will get my red iron meat fix, whatever. Rice, I got a bag of rice. This was like so much cheaper than that grocery store down the Everglades. All of this food I got was 35 bucks. And this will be like more than a week's worth of food. I got way too much food here. I won't, probably won't even cook it all. As for the condiments, like I said, I need to somehow get this stuff out of the container. What do you do when like a thing of salt has all been solidified? I don't know. I'll have to break this open with a knife or something. And I've got some of that liquid smoke hickory stuff. I tried it last time. It was really good. I don't know if I'm gonna cook with it. I might just like splash it on at the end on the meat after it's been cooked. And what else? I got water. I got a phone call unless in case I need to call the front desk or something. I don't know. This is very weird doing a meal prep. I feel like I'm in a conference room or something. Oh, and uh, Hotel provides all the plates and dishes and stuff, all the pots and pans. I can cook like everything at the same time. This will probably take half as long as it does if I was doing it at a campground. I still think I'm gonna start by cooking the meats first. I just like to get that out of the way. I realize I left my Ziploc bags down in my van. Yeah, this is 
probably the number one thing I hate about staying in hotels. Having to pack up everything for my van, bring it all up here, yada, 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 whatever. All right, let's get cooking. First, I need to figure out how to use this stove top. I figured out how to isolate a burner, but it doesn't give you like actual temperatures. It just gives you like a, I can set it to four or five or six, but what do these numbers mean? I have no idea. Yeah, I feel so stupid. I have no idea how to use this induction cooktop or what the numbers mean, but I need to go down and get those Ziploc bags and cooking oil out of my van. So I'll ask the person at the front desk how to use this. The lady at the front desk doesn't really know how to use the induction cooktop either. So what I'm doing is I set it at a two, got my rice going in it. I'm going to see how long that takes the rice to boil. I know what kind of flame takes rice to boil and how long, you know what I mean? As like a touchstone. We'll see what two does and then I'll adjust the settings on the other burner accordingly. You know, induction cooktops, aside from being just a pain in the ass to use, I don't recommend them in van life because they use a ton, I mean a ton of electrical energy. And in van life, the number one hardest thing to obtain is not water. Water is easy once you know how to find it. Sleeping spots, a little more challenging. Also, in the long run, easy once you get comfortable with it. But staying charged, keeping your batteries topped up is the hardest part of van life, at least for me. I don't have solar panels, and even if you do have solar panels, you know, induction cooktops are going to drain your battery really fast. So a warning about induction cooktops. I'm not a fan of the induction cooktop, but it's going to serve its purpose tonight. I think me and the induction cooktop have come to an agreement. I took the rice off. The rice actually cooked perfectly, even though it never actually boiled. But when I took it off, it started flashing an H at me. I have no idea what it, what an H means. Hot? Heat? Hell? Hello? I don't know. But I've got the other meat cooking right now, the pork. I sliced it in half. It seems to be cooking really well. All I have left to do is chop up the rest of these vegetables and go down and get my laundry out of the dryer. I noticed there's a gym down there too. Yeah, I think staying at this hotel tonight was just what I needed. The last few nights I have just been like swampy and messy. I think this video started with me getting the hell out of the Everglades. I can't believe people live down in that swamp. I wanted to enjoy Miami. You know, but that place is just so dense and congested that I just shot right out of there. Like, I did not, I stayed in a Dunkin' Donuts for like an hour and got the hell out of there. So, I'm sorry, Miami folks. I just, I find your city very claustrophobic. I'm having a great time here on the Space Coast. I think I should have come here first or something. I don't know. At this point, I'm making up this trip as I go, folks. I don't know where I'm going to be like a week from now. There is a Europa Clipper launch at the Rocket Center like one week from today. I would love to see that, but I think tomorrow I'm going to do that Space Coast tour in the morning and then move on to Orlando after that. I want to do one or two of those theme parks there. I also really don't want to pay for a hotel for the rest of this trip. I've done 10 nights Two of them in hotels so far, and I have 11 more nights to go on this road trip. Gonna try to stick to campgrounds. I think I might end the video here. Yeah, this was, I don't know. I don't even know what this video is all about. I ended up doing a meal prep in a hotel and whatever. I'm just gonna say good night, folks. I'll give you a, I'll end this video with a clip of my prepared food. It smells really good in here, but for now, I'm gonna say peace out. Thanks for watching whatever the heck this was.